The Kona Rogue NRB DL, finally, finally. Find out what I like and dislike about it in this video. Welcome back Pathless Peddlers and if you're new to the channel, if you love bike culture, gravel bikes, the supple life, then you have found your people, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. So the Kona Rogue NRB DL, probably the most requested bike to review on the channel. If I had a dollar for every person that has contacted me via email, via Instagram, via YouTube comment, asking me to review a Kona Rove, I would have enough money to just go out and buy one. I'm gonna just address the elephant in the room. If you guys follow us on Instagram, then you know that we had a really difficult time uh, getting a hold of someone from Kona, getting a hold of a bike to review. All I can do is ask, forward all your uh, requests, but ultimately they make the decision. So there it is. So let's jump into the review. The Kona Rove NRB DL has an aluminum frame with a carbon fork. And this particular model comes in this Robin shell blue, which just looks amazing. The bike also ships stock with 650B wheels and tires. It's running the ubiquitous WTB Horizon tires that are 47 millimeters wide. But nice and supple. We see this tire on a ton of bikes. The cockpit is uber classy with this brown. I think it's a faux leather tape. Uh, the brifters are Shimano 105. It's a 2x11 drivetrain with hydraulic disc brakes. There's a lot of nice like aesthetic touches on the bike aside from the just beautiful overall color. Inside the fork there's a kind of a nice graphic inlay. It's a damn fine looking bike. In terms of utility it does have uh, brazons for a rack and fender in the rear and it's got hidden fender mounts in the carbon fork. Unfortunately, no three pack mount, no ability to run a front rack of any kind. I tested the size 54, which is probably a hair too big for me. It was the only demo size they had available. So enough of the specs. How does this bike ride? Was it worth the wait? I have to say I was pleasantly surprised. The rear was nice and generally responsive, though definitely a little bit more on the stable side. And the front of the bike was a good match. It wasn't too twitchy. It wasn't boring. Overall, the rear matched the front and it was just a nice riding bike. It felt kind of like a uh, road endurance geometry, but right size for the 650B wheels and tires and made a, a scooch more stable. Riding on pavement, it was just a joy to ride with those big and supple tires. The bike climbed really well. It was smooth, the gearing was was pretty good. I felt like I definitely got in a nice standing cadence. One could say it almost planes, which is pretty good for a aluminum frame. In terms of descending, the bike was nice and predictable without being overly boring. Some new gravel bikes tend to lean way too much on stability and it becomes a little bit of a snooze fest. But like I said, this is just a nice balanced bike. Just a little bit of flair to keep you excited, but not so much squirreliness where you wouldn't feel comfortable taking it on a really long, uh, bike tour or a really long gravel ride. So in terms of just general riding, uh, I really like this bike. It's actually really reminiscent of the uh, Warbird version three, a bike that uh, both Laura and I love. It has those same kind of ride characteristics, but has the added suppleness of the 650B tires. Looking at tire clearances, it looked like you might be able to squeeze in a little bit more tire in there, maybe a 50 millimeter or even a 2.1, depending on uh, your rim choice. So your your mileage may vary. I would definitely uh, check it out first before committing to it. So what are the things I like and dislike about this bike? Uh, the first big like is the aesthetics. I think they really nailed it. I love that contrast between the brown tape and that Robin's eggshell blue. It's really on point and gumball tires of the WTB Horizons really sets it off nicely. But the bike is not just pretty looks. It's actually a really fun uh, riding bike. To put it within a spectrum of bikes that I've ridden this year, I would say it's uh, definitely more middle of the road, but slightly biased towards the more uh, racier feel. It's not as quick to handle as something like the Midnight Special or the Surly Straggler, but definitely feels uh, a little bit quicker and snappier than the version 4 Warbird, than the uh, All City Space Horse or Cosmic stallion and really navigates that fine line of a uh, stable bike for gravel for long endurance and gravel rides but also being fun it's a fun bike so those are the two likes two really big likes what are the dislikes the first big dislike is the gearing for me uh, I would probably try to use this bike as a light gravel touring bike and again that compact road double just doesn't do it for me I wish bikes like this would really 
move away from uh, using the compact double and using those subcompacts that are 46, 30, that'd be the, the perfect gearing for a bike like this especially if you're gonna do gravel rides with lots of climbing or even use this to go bike packing. So the gearing gets a ding for me, but if you do only use this on the road and uh, ride it as a supple road bike, just pure pavement, then it's probably gonna be enough. And lastly, the final dislike, which is probably the biggest dislike for me, is I wish there was a little bit more utility in the front fork. I would have loved it if this bike had three pack mounts or had the ability to carry a small rando rack, because I think uh, this geometry, you know, the supple tires really lends itself to more adventure riding. But as it is, you can you'll, you have to run a rackless front bag system. But I think if they had a fork option that had three pack mounts that could take a front rack or front low riders, they would have really knocked this bike out of the park in terms of a bike that's fun to ride naked, but also offers a lot of utility. But as it stands, can't do that. Have to find a different fork. And that's about it. There's a lot to like about this bike. If you want to use it just as a pure road bike or a bike for gravel events, road events, perfect bike for that. If you plan to go bike packing with it or ride some really steep gravelly terrain, might have to make some upgrades in particular with the gearing and get creative with how you pack things. So a lot to like about this bike. It is actually one of my favorite bikes that I reviewed this year. Despite all the challenges of getting the bike to review, uh, I really like it from a purely like objective is it a good bike does it ride well is it a fun bike uh it definitely ticks those boxes i know immediately the the, the first comments are, are going to be can you review the the skill version can you review the sutra the libre they have lots of great bikes but it's really up to them to see if you know they want me reviewing bikes or not like i alluded to this bike was really challenging to get a hold of. I tried my best just because so many of you requested it. So if you wanna see more Kona bike reviews, uh, let me know in the comments below, but also message them on Instagram. Maybe if they see enough requests, um, we'll get a chance to review another bike. If you have any other questions about the bike, leave those in the comments below. And if you like this review, consider supporting the channel. I don't get paid by brands to review their product. And this lets me speak my mind honestly. And if you appreciate that, um, check out those links and as always keep the supple side down.